Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about zoom lenses for the Panasonic GH5, and I'm gonna go through some of the ones that I use and give some information about them and what I like and don't like about some of these lenses. If you're new to this channel, my name is Caleb, and I've been doing freelance video production since 2012. But this channel is a channel to help you make your own videos, whether you just started or you've been doing it for a while. If that's something you're interested in, it would be awesome if you hit that subscribe button. Now lately I've been talking a lot about the Panasonic GH5 because I think it's a great camera. One of the great things about the Panasonic GH5 is just the versatility you have and the different types of lenses you can use. Lumix has fantastic lenses that are micro four third mounts. Olympus has awesome lenses, but even with different adapters, you can use Canon lenses or the top of the line cinema lenses. But in this video, I'm talking about zoom lenses that I use, the good and bad, and why I use them. So let's jump into it. If at any time during this video, you want to check out these lenses, I've got some Amazon links down in the description. And this video is not sponsored by anything. These are lenses that I've purchased and used and love. The first lens I'm going to talk about is almost a must have for the GH5 system, and that's the Lumix. 12 to 35 2.8. Now the one I use is the Mark II and it's a constant 2.8 through all focal lengths. Now this 12 to 35 on the GH5 would be equivalent to your pretty standard 24 to 70 millimeter. I think the build quality and the image quality coming out of this lens is fantastic. So here's a few things I love about this lens and the first is just the size. So normally when you have a 24 to 70 lens, they're pretty beefy. So this would be a size comparison. This is a regular full frame 24 to 70. And this is the Micro Four Thirds 12 to 35, which would be equivalent to the 24 to 70. So the size difference is significant, which makes for a super lightweight setup and easy to transport. Another thing I love about this lens is the optical image stabilization, which paired with the GH5 provides dual IS, which isn't quite like being on a gimbal, but it is very, very stable for handheld shots. Another thing I like about this lens is that it's weather sealed and living where I live in South Dakota, sometimes you have some pretty harsh conditions, especially in winter. So having that weather seal on it is a must have for me. All right, a couple things I don't like about the lens is sometimes I find it a little bit difficult to pull focus with this lens. It might just be user error, but sometimes I have a little bit of difficulty pulling focus with it. Then another thing I don't like about the lens, which is super picky and pretty much all of the zoom lenses have it, is that it protrudes out whenever you change focal lengths, which for me, especially with using like the Sigma 18 to 35, I just don't like how it shoots out like that. But like I said, that's just a picky thing. And overall, it's not that big of a deal. Lumix 12 to 35 is a great lens, constant 2.8. And I love using this thing. And it's pretty much a must have for the GH5. All right, the second lens I'm going to talk about is the Sigma. 18 to 35 1.8. So this is probably my favorite lens that I use. And when my GH5 is rigged up, this pretty much never leaves the rig. This thing is a beast of a lens. This thing is super heavy. It's built like a tank and it's super versatile and you can use it in any situation. However, this is a Canon mount and to use it on the GH5, you need to adapt it. And for that, I use the Metabone Speed Booster. And with the Speed Booster, I can get up to a 1.3. You're gonna join? You're gonna jump in? Oh, okay. Just shooting a video. Just shooting a video, yeah. All right, so here's a few things I love about the Sigma 18 to 35. First of all is like I talked about on the Lumix, the zoom feature does not protrude out. Everything's internal. So you're not having anything shoot out of the end of the lens. And that's why I love it on the GH5 rig. I love the fact that it's a 1.8 and then with the Meta Bones, it's a 1.3. With that, you can get some great depth of field. I love the build quality of this thing. Like I said, it's like a tank and the image quality coming out of this thing is some of the best I've seen. Now there's very few things that I don't like about this lens, but one of the things is when I am in autofocus, which I very rarely use, but when I am in autofocus with this, since it's being adapted to the GH5, it just searches all over the place and pretty much never gets focus. So I hardly ever use autofocus with this lens. I hardly ever use autofocus on the GH5, which is understandable. You've seen 
hundreds, thousands of videos on the autofocus, which is just not good, but never do I use autofocus with this lens. I'm trying to think of other things I don't like about it, but I think that might be the only thing. Okay, so the next lens that I'm gonna talk about is the Olympus 7 to 14 2.8. I'm telling you, these Olympus lenses are amazing lenses. And I got this 7 to 14 2.8 because at the time I was doing a lot of real estate and having that wide angle was great for those types of shoots. This is a micro four thirds mount and it would be an equivalent to about a 14 to 28 millimeter. So again, this is a constant 2.8 through all focal lengths, which is great for low light, especially in the real estate setting. Sometimes you get into some pretty dark rooms and you need all the light that you can get. So instead of a autofocus, manual focus button or switch, this one actually has a ring that you can snap on, snap off to go from autofocus to manual focus. And when I do use autofocus on the GH5, this is the lens that I use the autofocus with. I found that the autofocus, for some reason, I don't know why, but works best for me when I'm using this Olympus 7 to 14. Now with this being a wide angle lens, it actually makes for a very good vlogging lens. It has that eight millimeter focal length, which would be what a lot of vloggers use, on like Canon cameras is that 16 millimeter. It's just a good vlogging focal length. However, this lens does not have built-in stabilization, but with the GH5 and the IBIS it has, it actually works out fine. Now, a couple things I like about this lens is the build quality. It's built fantastic. I really like the focal lengths of seven to 14, and it basically has a built-in lens hood. Now, another really cool thing with this lens is that it has a customizable function button that you can set, and combined with all the function buttons that you have on the GH5, really what you can do with this setup with this lens and with the GH5, there's just so many possibilities. Now, a couple things I don't like about this lens is that there is no filter thread whatsoever. And I think that is because the way the lens kind of protrudes out like that, there's just not space with that built in lens hood, there's just not space to put a filter on there, which there have been many times where I would have loved to use this lens, but there is no way to put an ND filter on there. And so I just wasn't able to use it. Another thing I don't like about this lens is that at the widest point at seven millimeters, sometimes you did get a little bit of a warped image on the sides. If you're taking real estate pictures in Lightroom, you can kind of compensate that a little bit and adjust those lines. But in the video, it's a little bit harder to do that. And you just don't want to use it at seven millimeter all the time. But this Olympus lens, seven to 14, 2.8 is a great lens. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're doing anything real estate or landscape related. This is a fantastic lens for that. This lens that I'm going to talk about that I've had for such a long time since my Canon T3i days which was a long time ago, but this has been a favorite lens of mine for a while. I don't use it as much as these other ones, but I still really like it. And that's the Tamron 24 to 70 2.8, and this is a Canon mount. So again, this is one that you're gonna have to adapt to the GH5, but with the Metabone Speed Booster, it adapts just fine. And if you need a little extra focal length, this is the perfect lens for that. So a couple things I like about this lens is just the build quality. It is huge. I love how big the filter thread is. It just looks good on the camera. However, it can be heavy, so you might not wanna carry it around all the time. But you do have the Tamron image stabilization built in here, which is the vibration compensation. You can turn that on and off. One of the things I have found, which I don't like about this lens, is that sometimes I feel like the GH5 IBIS and the vibration compensation on the Tamron lens, they're kind of fighting each other a little bit. And especially when I'm shooting in like 120 frames per second, you really notice like just some weird movement in the image. And it's almost like the two are battling each other. So if you ever did use this lens, you might need to turn that vibration compensation off and just use the IBIS from the GH5. You have a manual focus and autofocus switch. And again, like the Sigma, probably because I'm on an adapter, it just doesn't work with the autofocus. But I love the image quality and the colors coming out of this lens. And this is an older version of this lens. I know they have a newer version. So maybe some of those 
things were worked out when you adapt that to the GH5, I'm not totally sure. One of the cool things about this lens is that you can actually lock the focal length with this little switch right here. So if you wanna stay at 24, lock it, you're not gonna be able to turn that knob and nothing's gonna change with the focal length. One of the things I haven't liked on this lens for a while is that I feel like the, the focal ring is a little noisy. And so if you're trying to pull focus and you have audio going, you might actually hear that ring. And also as with the Lumix, when you change focal length, it's gonna pop out like that and just extend the length and size of the lens. So if you're on a gimbal or something like that, you're gonna have to probably make a weight adjustment to compensate for that extra length on the lens. But overall, this Tamron is a great lens. Like, and like I said, I don't use it as much as I use some of these other lenses, but it's great to have in the kit and I pull it out whenever I need it. Now, finally, the last lens that I'm gonna talk about, which I hate and can't stand, is the Lumix 14 to 42, which is on the camera right now. I don't even wanna talk about it because I don't like it. Hopefully I'm even in focus and it's not all fuzzy right now. But there you go, there's some of the lenses that I use on the Panasonic GH5. I think these are great lenses for the GH5. If you're interested in checking them out, make sure you check the links below. They are affiliate links. If you have any questions about these lenses or other lenses for the GH5, H5, comment those down below. I'd love to get a conversation started. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.